Hey, welcome to another episode in basic PC building. This video is gonna be all about the installation and configuration of RAM. It's actually really easy to do as long as you know your way around a motherboard and basic system BIOS settings. And if you have no idea what any of that stuff means, don't worry about it, because that's the whole point of this video. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to get up and running with your new RAM. Let's do it. This is the motherboard I'm gonna be using. It's an Intel board, meaning it's designed to accept Intel CPUs, and it supports DDR4 RAM. You're probably going to notice that there's also DDR5 available. DDR5 is the latest PC memory standard. It's the successor to DDR4, which has basically been the industry standard for years now. The reason I'm mentioning this is because it's very important to make sure you buy the right RAM for your motherboard, whether that's for a new system that you're building or an upgrade for an existing one. DDR4 motherboards will only accept DDR4 RAM, and DDR5 motherboards will only accept DDR5. You can't mix the two. So make sure you take your time and pay attention when you're picking out your parts. All right, so if we take a look at our motherboard, we can find our DIMM slots. There's four of them here in a bank, all clustered together on the board, and that's typical. Your board should look the same as that. And if you're wondering what DIMM stands for, it's Dual Inline Memory Module, and that's where we're gonna install our RAM. There's a few important details you're gonna wanna know before you start sticking your RAM in here. The first thing is slot configuration. If we look next to the DIMMs, there's a detail printed right on the motherboard. That's gonna tell us how our DIMMs are laid out. So it says we have slots A1, A2, B1, and B2, and that corresponds to the slots right next to it in the bank. Slot A1, slot A2, B1, and B2. The most common RAM kits available today come with either two or four modules, and that's because they're designed to work together in what's called dual channel mode. Dual channel offers some performance benefits over single channel, and it requires two modules to work. So that's why you're gonna see systems are most typically gonna have either two or four modules and not one or three. So for this tutorial, I've got a kit of two DDR4 memory modules. Now, if we go back to that little dim layout that's printed on the motherboard, it's telling us that we need to use slots A2 and B2 first in order to optimize performance. Some motherboards just have a little star printed next to the slots that it wants you to use, and that's fine too. It's exactly the same thing. And you can also check your motherboard manual for further information on RAM configurations if you want to double check. RAM modules have a few notches that need to line up properly with the slot. These notches on either end are what's going to allow the locking clips to hold the module into place. And this notch on the bottom where the contact pins are is going to make sure the module can only be inserted one way. So it's kind of foolproof in the sense that you really can't put it in any way other than the right way. So if we come over here, we can press down on the little clips on each side to open them up on the two slots that we need. Some boards only have one set of clips that you have to open, but on this one, there's a set on both sides of the dims. Either way though, the process of getting the module installed is exactly the same, so don't worry if your board only has a clip on one end. Now we can take our first RAM module and make sure the little notch at the bottom here lines up with the little key in the slot. And you can see that down here on the dim. And then we'll just line it up on both sides and press straight down until those clips close and it locks into place. And when you're doing that, make sure you press straight down with even pressure on either side of the module. You don't wanna be off on an angle and putting awkward or uneven pressure on it because you can actually damage your module or even your dim slot that way. So be careful and press straight down. Okay, now we can repeat the process with our second module. Line it up with the slot in the right direction and press straight down, applying even pressure on both sides until it locks into place. Perfect. So that's it for the actual hardware part. There's really not much to it when it comes to installing RAM as long as you know what you're doing, like I said before in the beginning of the video. So now that we got that all installed, the important part is gonna be to make sure it's configured so that it can run at its rated speeds and timings, which is very important if you wanna get the performance out of your RAM that you paid for. I've got another computer next to me right over here. It's already all set up and running so that I can show you how to do that part. We're gonna jump into the system BIOS and I'm gonna go through some settings and show you what to do. To get into the BIOS, during the startup sequence, you just press the delete key, or on some systems it's F2, or sometimes both, you can use either or. Now, this is an ASUS motherboard, and that's what the, the BIOS looks like on here. Each manufacturer kind of puts their own little creative spin on it, so it might not look exactly like this, but the basic functions are the same. The whole idea behind BIOS is it's the basic configuration for all of your system hardware. So on this screen, there's all sorts of detailed information about your PC and the system hardware that you have installed. So you can see what CPU there is, the core voltage, motherboard temperature, what type of storage uh, drives are connected, fan curves, fan speeds, all sorts of things. But today we're really only worried about the memory profile. 
So because this is an Intel system, I'm looking for XMP, which stands for Extreme Memory Profile. But that has a bit of a different name. It's called DOCP if you're running an AMD system. So on here, I'm just gonna tab down using the arrow keys on my keyboard down to where it says XMP. And by default, that's gonna be disabled. So I'm gonna press enter to open the menu and switch that to enabled and press enter again. So now, right away, as soon as I hit enabled, you can see that the system's pulling the information from those memory modules and showing us what that configuration looks like. So we've got DDR5, it's supposed to be running at 5200 megahertz with timings of 40, 40, 40, 80, and at 1.2 volts. So at this point, I can actually save these settings and go into Windows and everything should be working properly. But just for the sake of this video, I wanna jump over to advanced mode and show you what's happening in more detail behind the scenes. So I'm just gonna tab over to where I have advanced mode and turn that on. Okay, now from this screen, I have some different options. So in AI tweaker tab, which is where I am now, if I open up AI overclock tuner, there's auto, manual, XMP1, and XMP2. So manual, who wants that? When you have XMP that does all the work for you, you're not gonna manually key in all this information. So let's ignore that and we don't want auto either. So we're really concerned about the XMP profiles. And if you read the bottom of the screen, it kind of gives you a bit of a rundown what those profiles do and sort of how they differ. But for me, I always just stick with profile one. So we'll hit enter there. And right here, again, that's just like we saw on the previous screen when it was in easy mode. It kind of tells you the DDR5, 5200 megahertz, and the timings and the voltage. That's just your basic information. But now if we scroll down here, we should be able to find the DRAM timing control. So if we open that up, there you go. So there's the details of what's happening behind the scenes here. The main timings are the first four numbers right there. That's the cast latency and the ones that come after it. So you can see we've got 40, 40, 40, 80, and then the command rate set to auto. You can key that in manually if you know what it is. It's usually printed on a little sticker on the RAM modules, but I'm gonna leave it on auto because I'm gonna trust the XMP profile to pull the right information. So yeah, basically everything looks good. We enabled XMP pulled all the information and our RAM should be configured and running at its appropriate settings. So to save this, when you're in your BIOS, you can just press F10 and that's gonna pull this screen up that shows everything that basically changed. We've gone from auto mode to DDR5, 5200 megahertz, the cast latency is set, all the other timings are set, the voltages are set and everything looks good. So I'm just gonna hit enter and boot into Windows. The system booted into Windows without any issues, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume everything's good. But just to make sure that we're getting the right speeds on our RAM, we can press Control-Alt-Delete on the keyboard, go over to the Task Manager, and then we can go to the Performance tab and click on Memory, and there we go. We can see we've got our 32 gigabytes of memory and it's running at 5200 megahertz. So that means everything's looking good and our configuration worked. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope this video helped you. If it did, give it a thumbs up and get subscribed because there's more content like this on the way. And we'll see you soon.